The men came from the mainland, from Cornwall and from Devon. They promised them an Eden, a little piece of heaven. But on this godforsaken rock, in the ocean's towering swell, it's less a slice of paradise than the very jaws of hell. And there was such a great occasion, such a fine affair. All the girls were dancing with ribbons in their hair. And if you listen carefully, on the west wind you might hear music from the grand ball on the Isle of Rosalie. Yeah, so I first heard about the Grand Ball of Rosevere through a song um, written by Chris Lethbridge. As a kind of theatre practitioner and a storyteller, I was really taken with the narrative of his story. So I asked Chris if it was, you know, where the story was from, and he said that he'd read it and that it, he thought it was based on fact. And then I just did some other reading. I went to the Morab Library um, and I read a book by Thomas Williams about Sir James Nicholas Douglas, who was one of the uh, Trinity House chief engineers. And he, his whole family actually worked on the building of the lighthouse. And first of all, the book is describing all these incredible conditions that they were living in. So living in tents, eating limpets, being washed off the rocks. But there's this, just this fantastic, just a, just a paragraph, which is like an incidental throwaway anecdote that describes the fact that it wasn't all hard work. There was sometimes a little festivity too. On one memorable occasion, invitations were received by dwellers on the other islands from the officers and men at Rosevere to a grand ball. The sheds were all clear of their contents, brilliantly illuminated and decorated with bunting, and at the expected hour, the visitors arrived in innumerable boats. Dancing was kept up until early morning when the guests rode back in the moonlight to the accompaniment of the Barrack Band, led by James Douglas, who played well. So the Western Rocks are probably the most treacherous part of the waters around Sydney. We know we have over 700 wrecks around the coast and a significant proportion of those are around the western rocks to the extent that you will have wrecks piled up on top of each other and you think my goodness you know the, it really is a graveyard out there so the there were three bishop rock lighthouses at different times so the first one was attempted 1847. So the first lighthouse was a sort of frame. It'll never work. Built over three years. 1850, that collapsed before it even started being operated fully. Told you so. You were right. The second one was granite built at the Douglases. Who's this? Sir James Douglas were the pioneers of granite built lighthouses. In the strong seas they were feeling movement, they started to get little cracks appearing. Spoke too soon. And so the third lighthouse is actually the second lighthouse encased by another layer of granite right the way to the top and extended upwards new light and um, that is with the addition of the heliport the lighthouse that we look at today As a musician living and working on St Agnes, I've always been interested in the idea of uh, playing music outside, of writing and uh, recording outside uh, in the landscape. And um, I suppose rather like uh, painters set up their easels in the open air and paint from what they see in front of them. 
And so when I was commissioned by the Grand Ball Project to uh, write a piece of music, original music inspired by Rosevere, it very much struck me that the best way to do that was to, to try to get to Rosevere. Incredibly hard to do, particularly in winter, because it's such a rough place to land. Um, there was a particular passage in a Victorian biography of one of the engineers on the Bishop Rock build, which describes the chief engineer, uh, James Douglas, uh, playing his flute on a rock uh, to the seabirds. And clearly that, that image um, had to inform in some way the, uh, the composition of, of the music. So you're not actually allowed to land on Rosevere. Um, it's a nature reserve and protected as such. So I had to get special permission to be dropped off there. And the first thing that strikes you once you've got used to the extremely potent smell of seabird is just how small the place is. And it becomes then inconceivable that this group of uh, engineers in the 19th century building the Bishop Rock Lighthouse had to live and work on this scrap of rock. There are the remains of some buildings, the cottage, uh, the cottages where the men lived and slept, uh, and the workshops where they worked. But honestly, I, I don't know how they survived it. Rosewear is still a fair distance from the Bishop Rock Lighthouse itself, um, when you consider that they were rowing extraordinarily heavy lumps of granite out into the western swell. As I wandered around Rosevere, uh, which doesn't take long, uh, with just the, the birds and the seals for company, um, I sort of felt I was getting a sense of what maybe these men who'd had to live and work there must have felt. Just the isolation and the sense of fear. I guess a few musical fragments based on some of these emotions started to come to me, just scraps really. when I got home back into my studio uh, I was able to take um, those tiny ideas and um, turn them into a much uh, much richer fuller soundscape um, but it's true to say that the, the, the seeds of the finished composition were found on, on Rosewood itself. During February Project Week, we were um, lucky enough to have a group of creatives come to the islands. We worked with children from the EYFS right up to Year 11, recreating the Grand Ball of Rose there. It was fantastic because we had people doing dance, we had engineers building lighthouses out of chocolate, we had willow lantern makers who built giant structures of Bishop Rock Lighthouse and gig boats and sailboats to go with it, which formed part of the procession. How have you shown this story in your dance? Um, we've been showing all the rocks and we like get our arms and we go like that and crash down. In secondary, um, we had uh, work, dance workshops all uh, based on traditional Cornish dances. One really cool outcome from the workshops and the project week was that we discovered some of the children's ancestors had actually worked on the building of the Bishop Rock Lighthouse, which was amazing for 
us as staff, but also for the children to make those connections. Literally one of the most amazing experiences of my career, and I will remember it forever. So unique, you know, just from the journey out there to this unbelievably beautiful island, and just such a unique and spectacular little school um, and delightful children and teachers. Yeah, I was genuinely, I've just been really inspired by working out here and I'm gonna go back to the mainland kind of with wind in my sails, as they say. Beck, talk, talk to me about the weather. So, working on Scilly has its own unique um, challenges, I would say, one of which is the weather. The weather and the sea, which of course is absolutely central to what our islands are about and island life is about. So we had an event weekend, which is Friday, Saturday. We were going to have a big procession, so Sue Hill made this beautiful four metre high with the Bishop Rock uh, sculpture, which was planned to be paraded through town. And of course the wind has got so, so heavy that hasn't happened. We did manage to have a procession, a lovely kind of slightly ramshackle procession with lo lots of the other extra bits that were made for, for our original procession. I think it's really important if you're doing a community arts based project is that you're not landing something on people that they're not really interested in. And I think one of the things about the Isles of Scilly is, is that actually per head of population, you have got such incredible creativity here and of such high quality. So again, the quilters themselves, the lioness quilters going in and I went to see them when we did the research and development with Anna. I have an interest in textiles anyway, it's something that I've done and, I, and the idea of a story quilt. So I've proposed that to them and honestly I, they, they ran with that idea. Carrie Scaife has just been a genius with kind of helping to design it. I don't have the right words really to explain how it feels to see a piece of work that's come from a, a small lot, spark of an idea and then becomes much bigger and better than you can ever, ever imagine. We've got 56 metres of bunting, I think, made, actually. <laughs> but then, obviously, I... Um, never have too much bunting. Never have too much bunting. just a historical project. The concerns of communities getting together are real now. You know, after Covid it was really important to get people together. And having just had the barn dance last night, wow, it was just really great. People love a party, don't they? <laughs> We 
gathered many of the stories down on the bench just down there with uh, Brian Jenkins, Alfie Hicks and Alfie the Box Trainer, early undertaker. The stories that fascinate me are the ones you can't find in the history books, so, which, which aren't in the museum and aren't anywhere. And a lot of those stories have ended up in the, the split of this of the of the Grand Ball play that we're doing. Here I am painting a cabbage. It's funny what you end up doing when you're doing a project, being a project director. <laughs> because I sent them a message saying I was really sorry that they couldn't come and that we'd be thinking of them. So what they're doing, this is my <laughs> is that they um, are actually getting together tonight to sing at the fish and chip place and they'll be thinking of us all and to break the leg. So I think that's really, really... <laughs> from St Agnes for desperate times. Peep has lived on it, polishing the lens and keeping the great light shining across the water for all to see. Sounders and charters from lion to tearing and, and bring us within lighthouses, day marks and boys. All away. I do hope as well there's been a bit of a, a buzz about the whole process and the event and that actually people will talk a little bit about perhaps going to the Grand Ball Barn Dance and going and being part of the play and, you know, seeing Becky's Silly Cake's amazing lighthouse and, and you know, from the school as well, kind of having, well, we've invented a, a new furry dance which has been fantastic which you know hopefully might get integrated somehow the barnacles have now got a set of or written and Salonian influenced tubes which I think is the first so I think that will continue as well so I think there's there's all sorts of practical or actual creative things that have been made but more than that I hope people feel that something fun happened <laughs>